Maximum pole length, 16 meters. Not on my watch. <laughs> Solid now. Well, as I said, there's the rig that beats the band. So if you watch this video, you'll see how we use that. So let's get fishing and take you for all the procedures. It is a brilliant little method when, I mean, the distance here is probably 19 metres and I can swing three, four metres if I want, even if it's further away with the heavier float, these heavier floats that I've made just swing it into the island and it catches fish and more fish than a little pellet waggler because it just lands absolutely spot on every time and nice and light. It's not a douche, if it was a pellet waggler it'd go in and sink. This just lands beautifully. Just swing it to the same spot every time. Right spot. Carp took it straight away. Well, do I get this fish in? And then I'll talk you through my rig. And these little floats that I've made. Very really powerful the fish here at Twin Lakes because it's quite deep and they surge to the bottom and fight a lot harder than in the shallower commercials. I think this one maybe fell. Look, it's just fine, a little bit different now. I've got it close in. And I don't think it's quite hooked properly. It's fine, a little bit like I'm not in control of it. It's changing direction. Yeah, it's just took at the side, on the side of its face. It's obviously gone for the pellet. I've hooked it at the side of its face. They all count if you get them in. Yeah, just hooked it at the side. Unhook this and I'll show you the rig. On his cheek. Nice little common. Right, let's show you it. Now, there's the lovely little rig I'm using. As you can see there, that is a gram and a quarter one way MP ropes so that I've cut down. I've made the stem shorter and I've put a different insert in. I'll show you those floats in a minute. I've got an Olivet fixed there with rubbers. Four inch hook length. And I try and have the Olivet, whatever depth I'm fishing, halfway between the float and the hook, what allows me to swing it better. And the main point of having that heavy float is if it was a light float, I wouldn't be able to swing it. Only if it was a flat, calm day, no wind. And it gives me control with that heavier float as well. It gives me the pendulum motion that I'll show you in a moment to get it swing, to swing it into position. And it will go into position every time because it's a heavier float and I've got more control. Instead of trying to flick a light little float that keeps coming back at you and you can't pull it where you want. But with that Olivet, and if it was 
quite a windy day, then I'd probably step up the float, maybe put a two gram one on that I've cut down. But very, very important having that Olivet and that heavier float. And also with the Olivet locked with rubbers, if I'd got shot on there, they could move up and down. That just stays put wherever I move that to. So if I go deeper, I'll pull the Olivet up a little bit more because you always want at least half the depth you're fishing with that full of the pellet. When you feed the pellet and they fall through the water, you want the, your hook bait to fall with it as if it's a free offering. If the Olivet's nearer to the hook, it falls through the water too quick and you don't get the right effect with it falling through your loose feed. Now I'll just show you some of these floats that I've cut down. So I start off with one of my roach floats, Karma Stem, and I cut them down. to this size. There's a two gram one. And I take the glass insert out, re-drill it to take one of my margin float insert, thicker inserts with a cord wire around the bristle. Glue that in so it's central. And then depending if it's not so windy, 1.25 of it's windy, then I'll put the two gram one on. You could probably even make a three gram one, but I haven't had to go that size yet. Lovely little floats adapted for this swinging method. So let's catch some more fish and show you how I swing the rigging. Just swung it in there again straight away. We've got a carp. The only other thing you have to be careful with, obviously, fishing that longer line, is you've got to take a lot more tension up when you come to net the fish because it's more line. It'd be easy to net it leaving the number three section on, but um, You couldn't use your puller then. Commons in here really fight hard. I see it just sit kinds of common. They really fight to the end, especially with the deeper water. Lovely. Nice common. Beauty. Now, when swinging the floating position, I've just fed it. I've got a couple of ducks out there at the moment. I've just fed it. Always feed before you go out. As I'm pushing the float out, it's obviously at me underneath the pole and the line's fully taut. I mean, I'm using my bump bar. I mean, I'm a great lover of using a bump bar, especially when you're fishing long lengths of pole. So now, before I lift my pole up, the float, is underneath the pole, it is at me. And as I lift it up, it swings out and I just follow it with a pole and it puts it into position. The lifting up the motion wants to swing the float underneath the pole and because it's heavy, it swings past the pole 
And as you let it go past the pole, you then lower the pole down after lifting it up to allow the line to go with the float to go out at full stretch. And it just lands in position. And then to get it in position again, because you want to pick it up and drop it in, pick it up and drop it in. When you pick it up, so as you lift up, because the float is two or three meters past the end of the pole, as you lift up, it comes swinging towards you. And because it's heavy, that's a gram and a half. Oh, we had a fish take that then. Um, because it wants to come back to the pole, it swings past the end of the pole, coming back at you again. And as it does, you then lift the pole up and it swings it back out like a pendulum. And then they just follow it out, lower your pole again, allowing the line to follow the float. Like I've just lowered the pole and the float's in motion and it goes past the pole, takes a full length of the line up and lands exactly where I want it to land. And the important thing, having that length of line, it's very important that the length of the line that you've got that you're swinging, that at the length of pole you've got, that you don't have too long a line and you'd swing it into the vegetation. So I know, holding the pole here, where the little um, mini extension goes in on the 16 meter, I know holding that there, that when I swing it, I cannot go into the vegetation. It'll go right tight to the bank where I want it. And all I simply do is, in between swinging, feed some pellets, lift it up, it comes in under the pole, and kick it out into position. So as it comes in, I sort of do a sort of a lift up with my knee with it, although I'm using it on the bump bar. So I lift up and it's coming in and I sort of push my pole out as if I'm following the float. But I am following the float. I'm giving it a slight kick to swing it towards the island and in lowering the pole allows the float to fly through the air, taking the loose line up at full stretch. And I know at full stretch it will land tight against the island. So I just pick it up, it comes under the pole, flick it out in a, like a forward motion. So I lift the pole up and then I lower the pole down. Up and lower the pole down. Lifting it up to swing the float in and then down to lower it out. And then we've got a fish on. I'll go through that again. Once you've practiced and got it, it it's easy, but it's, if I don't follow the float, it will just land in a, a pole beneath the pole, a, a pole beneath the pole. Before I ship out, I'll feed a few pellets. So as I push the pole out, the float is nearest to me, but the line's at full stretch. So I ship out. Hold with my hand where I know when I flick it, it cannot go onto the island or into the vegetation. And even though the wind's blowing now, I just lift up and follow it into position and then bring it back and kick it out and follow it. And now by following it, it takes the full length of line, but you must keep the pole low to the water. The higher up, the less the angle and it, the float won't fly through the water. It will stop it short of where I want it. So I just lift it up, swing it and lower the pole. It's like a lift and a sort of a swing motion. But I'm just doing it here, and it's only a slight movement. So I lift it up, it comes underneath the pole, and I gently sort of just swing it back out. But I must follow it with the pole in a nice motion. Lift it in, it comes under the pole, lower it down. It's like a little flick as well, but a gentle flick. If I flick it quick, it'll all tangle. You've got to do it in a nice motion. Lift up, it comes under the pole, and gently swing it back out, but lowering the pole tip. 
all in one nice motion. And then you can just play about with your depth. So it's like a pellet wagon really on the end of your pole, but it's a heavier float and you need that heavier float to swing it in position. Well, I've just shallowed the float. I've probably, like when you're fishing the pellet waggle, I've just pulled it down probably four inches because I missed a few bites and it's just instant. I think also with a little plop of the float going in, sometimes like on the pellet wagger it plops in the fish, they're on it straight away. Well, I'm swinging that length of line, and I'm swinging that gram and a quarter float in, it just lands so neatly on the water. And it's an instant bite. Obviously very important to keep feeding as well. I'm getting a rhythm of feeding because it's very easy to get caught up in, keep swinging it into position, swing it back in, swing it back in, and you forget to feed. And you're not going to get the bite if you don't keep the feed going in. It's amazing the difference just moving the float a few inches, even when you're fishing shallow from missing bites to connecting with the fish. Really do fight in here, the carp. So I pulled the float down probably about four inches, but the other vet I'd normally have halfway between the float and the hook, but I'm just keeping it probably three quarters up because I want, still want that full in amongst my feed when I lay it in, giving it full and natural as if it's just a loose offering. Very important, keep the feed going in. <whistles> Got the ducks out there. Polly's favourite friends. <clears throat> The wind's really blowing now, I'm going to just pick it up and with that heavier float, just swing it into position. If I got a lighter float one, I'd never be able to do it. Gentle swing, follow it forward, and it's in position every time. And a fish on. Feed while I'm bringing it back.
Well, another one falls to the swinger. Well, I'm going to finish on this fish. I hope you've enjoyed it. Put it into practice. It's something to go out and have a practice on venues up and down the country. And once you've got the knack of swinging that rig out, it will put more fish in your net on days that you couldn't because you couldn't reach it. With a swinger, you can. <laughs>